Today, how I pack my tripod to check on flights. All right, so today I'm coming to you from a little different spot than normal. I'm actually in my four car garage here in Portland, Oregon. My studio is actually up above. It's a 1400 square foot space up above the garage. And um, I like to take a tarp, lay it out and do my final kind of packing for a trip. I'm taking off on Saturday for Patagonia for a two and a half week trip with a bunch of cool people to Patagonia. Last week I talked a little bit about what I'm taking with me on that journey. Uh, and, and I got a lot of people asking me, well, are you gonna carry your big tripod on? How do you get your tripod on flights with you? And I have been checking tripods on flights all over the world, from South America to Alaska to Patagonia to Europe to Africa, multiple trips without ever having a problem. And let me show you how I do it. You know, I'm, I'm gonna showcase here. I'm taking these two tripods, which I talked about the reasons last week. Uh, this Benro fluid head uh, tripod with the center column. Not my favorite typically, but I want a lightweight second tripod for time lapse and uh, <clears throat> potentially for filming in different situations so I can be working with two cameras at once. I'm going to collapse that tripod uh, and then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take my Gitzo, my big seven foot tall four section lightweight carbon fiber set of legs with my Manfrotto 500AH fluid head on it. I'm taking the stone bag loose off of two legs of both of these tripods. And then what I want to do is I want to put the smaller of these true tripods. I'm going to open the legs just a little bit on both of them. I like to kind of interweave them so that they close around each other. And the big tripod sort of forms the backbone of this whole thing. Now I'm gonna have to take the smaller of the two fluid heads off and I'll either put that in my rolling camera bag or in my backpack, which is also gonna get checked. So I've got a big rolling think tank international bag. And then, so I've got these two tripods sort of interwoven. They're not quite perfect yet. I can get them a little bit better. This leg needs to extend out a little bit so that when they collapse, they kind of bite down on each other. And then you can actually wrap the stone bags a bit around them. They tuck up nice and tight, sort of the size of one tripod here. And I have a couple of these Enduro tripod bags. I've long used these bags they're fantastic bags. They, have, they kind of convert to a backpack if you want. They're lightly padded. They're nice and big. And they came with the older Manfrotto, or the older uh, Enduro tripods. And it fits in here perfect. Either the Enduro tripods that I have or the Gitzos. And they have these nice padded wraps to go around the head. They're actually on both ends, which works out nicely if you're able to fit your system in with both heads on it. In this case, I can't, but I'm just gonna wrap this padded piece around to kind of lock these tripods in here. And you can see there's even a little bit of extra room. Since I have trekking poles that I'm taking with me for hiking up to Lago Torre and some of the hiking that we're gonna do, we're gonna do an overnight at Lago Torre, which means I'm also packing three tents and two bivy bags so that we have enough place for everybody in the workshop to stay. I've got an extra sleeping bag for one of the participants. I've got two air mattresses. So I've got a whole bunch of other stuff I'm packing into these duffels. And what I'm gonna do, I've got those trekking poles in here. So all of my kind of long goods are tucked in here, padded in this tripod bag. I'm not sure if you can buy these aftermarket. I'll take a look. If I can find a link to this, I will put it in the description to this video. It, they're just great tripod bags. I'm sure that actually Enduro bought them from some other supplier and just put their logo on it. Now, the key to this whole thing for me traveling and checking gear are these extra large LL Bean rolling duffel bags. They're very lightweight and they're long enough that this tripod bag fits 
right into them. They have a little frame skeleton that keeps everything a bit safe. So you can see, as I get this thing packed in here, it fits right in there in the middle of the bag. And now, because, I'll get back here where you can really see this, and it's got, it's got an extension handle here to, to roll it, and it's got rolling wheels, they're roller blade wheels, they're replaceable. So you can set it down here, and what I'll do is put a tent on either side. A lot of times it's my clothes, sometimes it's my, it's my camera backpack that goes in there if I'm gonna take one bag. What I'm doing on this trip, I'm taking a lot of extra lenses to share with workshop participants, long lenses, so not everybody needs to bring one. There's a couple people that wanted lenses that I have for Sony that they don't have, uh, and some big Nikon long lenses for all the Nikon shooters coming. I've got most of my critical gear packed into my international rolling bag to roll through the airports. I've got the stuff I can't quite fit in there for carry-on, padded into my f-stop bag and an internal camera unit in there. That is gonna go in my second rolling duffel bag. I'll show you that in a second. But what I'm gonna do here is just start putting soft things that are gonna pad this a bit. I've got a bivy bag and two tents in here now, a lightweight tarp for us to use to keep gear clean and maybe use as a drop cloth for a tent. And I'm starting to feel the weight of this. It doesn't feel like 50 pounds to me yet. I've got another one pound Thermarest air mattress here, another bivy bag. And as it starts to get bigger, I have this really cool tool and I'll put a link to this. Amazon sells these really affordably. This is a luggage weigher. Um, it basically is like a handle with a hook. You can turn it on and you can choose whether you're in kilograms or pounds. But what I do is I just put this around the handles of the duffel tear it so that it's set at zero, and then pick up the duffel with it. And I can tell we are at 38 pounds. So I got 12 more pounds of room in this bag. Awesome. So, you know, one thing I tend to do, I'm sure with 12 pounds I can get the last of the tents in here. This is my, my kind of special Hilleberg Mountaineering three-person four-season tent. It's a really special tent to me that would be as bad as losing the tripod bag. Um, and I've got a sleeping bag here. You know, given how well I'm doing right now, I'll bet I could fit my big North Face puffy down coat that I'm bringing in case we get a cold snap down there of Antarctic air. Let's see where we're at now with the tent and the puffy coat. We have put a lot of gear in here. Let's see. It's just this incremental little game that I play. I've got 40, not quite 46 pounds. Awesome. More room yet. I've got about 200 Starbucks Via packets right here, instant Starbucks coffee. Um, you know, there's, there's probably going to be a lot of times where we're in towns with wonderful South American coffee, but we're also going to be out on the road in some really remote places and vans. And I have two cook stoves that I'm bringing with me, uh, that are super efficient for when we're backpacking up to Lago Torre and stay in the night. So why not have coffee wherever we want? I've got enough for everybody. Tuck that in there. I've got, uh, some... Purezine, which is water purification stuff for when we're out in the wild, as well as Coffee Mate. Those two should probably go in one of my Ziploc bags. Shoop. Shoop. All right. I bet we're getting close. This might even be too much. We'll check it out. All right. And. I bet we're getting close. That has a feel. I've done this enough times, I start feeling where 50 pounds is. We are at 49.1. That's where I start grabbing freeze-dried meals that I'm bringing with me. For my co-instructor David and I, I'll throw a couple of breakfasts in there and see where we're at. 
nine. Bingo, that bag is packed. Now, these LL Bean rolling duffels are really nice. You zip them up. They've got little central cinch straps with ladder locks so you can get them nice and snug. Nothing's gonna move in there. Whoop. And cool, 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 we have a sleeping bag, three tents, two bivy sacks. God, I don't even remember everything I put in here. It's definitely a solid 50 pounds, but the tripods are completely protected in there. And I can just roll this thing into the baggage clerk. All right, so the other bag that I'm gonna pack is gonna have my F-stop backpack that I'm actually gonna wanna carry while I'm out moving around. And this is my absolute favorite duffel. This is my, my North Face Black Hole. It's their extra large, big, it's huge. It actually may have more capacity than the LL Bean bag. The reason I don't put the tripod in here though is it's not quite as long as that LL Bean rolling bag. The LL Bean rolling bag is just special because it's so long. So this back bag is gonna get my backpack. which I'll actually fill up more. I don't have it fully packed. And then a whole bunch of other stuff around it. Now, I'll probably have to pay and check a third bag because I have a bunch more food. I haven't gotten any clothes or my toiletries in here. And I still have two sleeping bags to put in here. But we're getting close. And you know, so these two just roll, maybe one more light carrying duffel uh, and I'm good to go. All right. so. Another question that I've heard from a number of you that, are, that have been watching my videos or you've been reading more positive reviews of the Nikon Z6 and Nikon Z7, and I will absolutely state to you, I am completely enamored with these cameras. I, I'm selling my Nikon D850. The only DSLR I'm keeping is the, the D500, and it's really just for the buffer and the frame rate. Uh, and the minute they come out with an APS-C mirrorless that can keep up with that buffer and frame rate, as long as its autofocus is as good as firmware 2.0 with the Z6 and the Z7, I'll be ditching it. But the question is, which should you buy? I've had a number of people ask me, and I think it depends on what camera you have now and what you like to shoot. You know, if you're really into fine art landscaping, you want giant prints of landscapes and really high resolution images that you can crop into, then the Z7 is a tough camera to beat. But when it comes to running around doing street photography in low light or doing star and astrophotography or shooting action at a higher frame rate, the Z6 is a little faster handling. Those 24 megapixel files fly through its system a little bit uh, more swiftly. You don't fill the buffer quite as quickly and it has better low light ability. That less megapixels per square millimeter of sensor really plays to its strong suit. I've started doing all my Astro with the Z6 just because it's easier to get the noise correction right and 24 megapixels is plenty for me. I don't see myself blowing up Milky Way images billboard sized. You know, I'm, I'm quite happy uh, sticking with you know, 40 by 60 and it's going to look fine at 24 megapixels. It's just got beautiful high uh, ISO noise performance. So I think if you already have a Nikon D850 and you're happy with it, try the Z6. It's fast handling. It's great in low light. If you, by contrast, have a D500 or a D750 and you're thinking you'd like a little more resolution, well, then the Z7 is probably the camera for you. I, it, they're exactly the same in every regard except the sensor is bigger in the 7. The other thing is that the way that the Z6 does video, it, it, it has a better algorithm for, it, it doesn't have to downsample as much and the way that it downsamples is better. You get a higher quality output, particularly in 4K with the Z6 than you do with the Z7. It's a little bit better handling video camera. It's a little more, little, little higher quality video camera actually, if you're a hybrid shooter. Both cameras are amazing if you're a hybrid shooter because when you flip the lever that's right by the autofocus on button, it switches from video to still and it remembers all the settings that you were in last time for either or. And the menu system and structure switches and the custom settings, you know, modes on the top dial remember <laughs> different custom settings for video and still. So it's really just a lever flip and suddenly you're ready to shoot video. 
it's much nicer than having to turn the wheel and reset all the settings and, and the way that the old DSLRs worked. It would be really hard for me to go back to shooting video with the DSLRs because these cameras are just way nicer for it. So that's my take. All right, everybody, so I'm heading for Patagonia on Saturday. I am so stoked, and I have some really fantastic people that are coming with me. Uh, if you're in that group, I hope you're as stoked as I am because we are going to have a blast. I'll be gone for two and a half weeks. I'm queuing up, so I'm approaching the scenes. One of them I actually created intending to, to put out while I was in Moab, so the intro may sound a little weird like I'm in Moab, but uh, I'm actually in Patagonia. Um, and th there's a few things I have kind of queued up uh, so that there'll be some, some stuff for you to watch while I'm gone, and I can't wait to come back with some stories to tell from Patagonia. Oh, hey, quick little postscript. Almost forgot to plug it. I still have some slots remaining in my Kauai workshop in February, as well as my, my March, April workshops in Cuba. You know, I opened a second workshop. The first one's pretty much plumb full, but the second, there might be one spot because someone switched over to the second. But there's still some spots remaining in that second workshop. Both of those are gonna be really incredible. If you're curious about it, hit me up. I'll get you more information. Again, if you're reaching out with questions and wanting to contact me, it's going to be a little tricky while I'm in Patagonia. I'll be in and out of places where I have, you know, relatively slow internet, uh, but I'll do my best. So I'll see you when I'm back. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing this with your friends. I really appreciate it.